Thanks for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, share, and like. Thank you very much. Hey, welcome back. As you know, I had some fun playing with Raspberry Pi 4 and Minecraft and LibreCAD and Tinkercad. And so now we're going to go on to load Octoprint on here because I got that new Ender 3 just begging for its own print server. So this is just a screenshot. I'm idling in Raspbian here. We're going to take some temperatures. The hottest spot I found was just this little chip right next to the audio port. Everything else was running in the middle 90s and that was running in the high 90s. Again, this is just idling in Raspbian. So I jumped into Tinkercad to make a special edition Raspberry Pi case just to celebrate this moment. So let's put it together here. Okay, so we got some 440 by one half inch bolts and nuts and we got some 3D printed spacers and we're going to attach those to the Raspberry Pi board here. Now we can attach that assembly to the back plate with the 440 nuts. Note that the cutout on the back plate corresponds to the slot for the memory chip so that you can access the memory chip there. Here we're going to use some panhead wood screws, these are 440 as well, to attach the back plate to the cover. Then the case legs just slide right into these slots and you got the finished case here. Alright, pretty happy about that. So we're checking out octoprint.org, there will be a link below for any of the URLs mentioned here. And we're going to download Octoprint. We're looking for the Raspi 4 version, which is down below in this little tiny hyperlink here. There we go. And we're going to download it. There it comes. And download finishes. Now we got to extract that zip. And there's our image file extracted. So let's load up the etcher. Select the image file. There we go. Looks like we got the right card. Let's go ahead and flash that card. This takes a while so I'm cutting out a lot here. Okay, so it's done flashing. Now it's going to do some validating. And then, as always, you get that warning from Windows that the card isn't formatted. You can just cancel out of that. So you want to go to the Wi-Fi setup and troubleshooting guide. Here I'm using Notepad++. They warn you to make sure to use a text editor not wordpad or word because they'll mess up your white space and your quotes and all that stuff so we're going to open up this file here that's that octopi wpa supplicant text filed on the card you just flashed there So you're going to get into this network section and uncomment those four lines so that you can define your Wi-Fi network in there, your SSID and your pre-shared key. And I'm not going to show you mine, of course. And then you also have to go down to the bottom once you input your Wi-Fi information 
go down to the bottom and you uncomment your particular country code. If you have to look up your country code, they give you directions on how to do that underneath this section here. And so that's it. You should be able to boot up your Raspberry Pi now. We're going to finish up editing here and eject this card. And we're getting ready to fire up the Raspberry Pi. All right, hold on. So Octopi is running on a stripped down Raspbian Buster build and basically there is no video output. All you see is the leads flashing. So we're just going to watch it fire up and then we have to figure out what to do next. Here I go on my router in the DHCP section and see the Octopi registered this IP address. You can see that lease time is very long there. It just got a lease. So it says you can use PuTTY to SSH into your Octopi. Going to get that 64-bit installer here. And what you can do is set your root password, changing it from the default. That's really the only step you're going to do in PuTTY here. So there you go. I'm opening PuTTY, setting in that IP address. We see that we get a connection there. I was unable to log in using the default passwords that are in the instructions. So that's uh, my first little twitch here. But we're going to go ahead and open up the web page and configure Octoprint now. Here we go. This is the setup wizard. You get presented this every time you install Octoprint for the first time. Access control. Yeah, you want users to log in to be able to send stuff to your printer. I don't want some shady guy out on the street printing stuff on my 3D printer while I'm not at home. There we go. Yeah, we're going to enable access control. Plus, I just logged in. Yay. Next. Uh, I don't like anonymous usage tracking. It's got the word tracking in it. Sorry, guys. So, online connectivity, you can read this and review it for yourself. I see that I'm able to get to the Google DNS servers. I'll enable connectivity check because I'm assuming my Octopi is going to be on the network. That's kind of the whole point of this exercise. Yeah, blacklist, plug-in list, that's good. Then you set up a default print profile. Just setting this up for the Ender 3. Looks like I missed a couple of tabs. I'll have to go back in and see what I missed. So, looks like we're ready now. I'm going to go physically set up the Octopi next to the Ender 3 and connect it to it. And here we go doing that. I got this little lead lamp so at night we'll be able to see what's going on. Firing up the Ender. Going to power up the Octopi. You see it lighting up there. So now we can go back out to the other room and get ready to send a print job. I'm just going to use a paper towel to wipe off the heat bed with a little alcohol. That helps everything stick. Okay, so now in Octopi, we're going to attach to the printer. Um, we get the unsafe printer warning. We're going to go ahead and disable that check because I don't need to see that every time I switch this on. Yes, we saw the warning before. Don't leave your printer unattended. Don't print unattended. Don't trust your printer. All of that. So safety risk goes with the territory. But we're going to go ahead and disable that plugin because I don't need to see that every time. Exercise caution while you're doing 3D printing. It's like anything else. It's a power tool. Think of it that way. Then you got to reboot the printer to get that setting in effect. Okay, we're back now. So we're going to connect to the printer again. And we see we don't get the warning. Now it's time to upload a job. I'm going to hit the upload button. 
find something I want to print. There we go. Then you hit the print button. And we can see the heat bed's going to warm up. And we can see we got the webcam live. Heat bed's just hitting the top here. I'm cutting out some of the time there. Now you see the hot end heating up. There we go. More time lapse there. And we can see motion kicking in. The printer's going to do something now. How exciting. This is what it's all about. And we can watch from the comfort of our living room. Here's the camera live there and you can see I'm not babysitting the printer. I'm in the other room watching it from that Octoprint web console. And we'll continue to monitor the progress. I'm speeding things along here. Don't want to bore you with 3D printing because it is actually really, really slow no matter what you do. This is fun watching the actual motion of the head here in Octoprint. And then if you go to the terminal you can see the actual commands going to the printer from Octoprint. Let's watch 3D printing a little bit more because it's so fascinating. And now that Raspberry 4 is actually doing something useful here besides idling and raspy. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the temperatures. And we can see it's running up in the 100 and teens. I think I saw a high of 113 go by at one point here. Shining a laser thermometer on a couple of different spots around the board. This is the back of the board, so it's running a lot warmer than it was idling. Okay, so Raspberry Pi 4 will run Octoprint. Temperatures seem reasonable. I'm going to keep playing with it. If I see something else, I'll let you know. Comment below, subscribe, share, and like. Thank you very much.